Today we're going to be revisiting Super Mario 64 DS. I forgot that I'm playing on computer. <laughs> I was so tempted to reach out and touch my monitor. Just gotta go down and click on adventure. <laughs> Can we just take a minute to just, just, let's just enjoy this music together for a second, just... Oh, it's so good. See, anytime that I replay this game, I replay the N64 version. I haven't played the DS version of this game too many times. I've beat it three times in total. So every time that I get back on this version of the game, it's still just mind blowing to me to just see these new graphics. Well, personally, I, I gotta be honest, I prefer the look of the N64 version. I don't know what it is. It might be nostalgia bias. It might be something about the art direction. I just feel like the N64 graphics and the art direction there fit the game a bit better. That being said, from an objective standpoint, in terms of like number of pixels, on the screen and in terms of realism quote unquote i guess i don't know this technically does look better in that aspect so yeah it's always mind-blowing for me to just like get back on this version of the game and really just soak in how good the animations and graphics here really do look. It's kind of a toss up because on the N64 original, like sure things are a little like smear looking just because that's what they had to do on the N64. They had to compress a lot of things to make everything fit on that 64 megabyte cartridge. But at the same time, things look a little more pixelated, I guess on the DS version. So it's really one of those pick your poison situations. The DS version gets a lot of flack because of the way that the controls work. For those of you that don't know, obviously on the N64 version and anytime that you emulate that game, you have a full 360 degrees of movement because you know like on an analog stick you you can go at a full 360 degrees however on the ds you only had the d-pad to work with so there was only a total of eight directions you could go in you had like the main four directions and then the four directions in between those directions technically speaking you could use the touch screen and you can control the character with this way and if you do it this way you have a full 360 degrees of movement and if you really wanted to you could tweak your controller so that your thumbstick inputs register as touch screen inputs but I don't care that much. Personally, all the times that I've played this game, I've never really had an issue with the D-pad. In fact, right now, as I'm recording it, it might get a little annoying. You guys might hear the clicking in the background, but I'm using the D-pad on my Xbox controller. It just, it works just fine with this game. Yes, the game may have been designed with the N64 analog stick in mind, but I mean, again, the D-pad works just fine. The one thing about the DS version of the game, right? I don't really view it as like a remake. This is more or less a reimagining. There's so many new things that were added to the game and so many different things that were tweaked here. Like this beginning opening section, of the game you're playing as Yoshi obviously originally you'd play as Mario you'd run up to the castle you'd go inside you go into Bob on battlefield you pick up Bob on King and you throw him around you get your first power star but in this it's completely different as you can see we went up to the castle door it was locked we had to come back to the garden get the key now we go inside of the castle and the entire first section of the game is completely different one nice thing though even though we're playing as different characters here as you can see Yoshi still has the classic triple jump and furthermore I would say that Yoshi is probably the easiest to control in this game for one simple reason and that is because he has has the flutter jump so when you're going in areas like TikTok clock for example you're able to more easily navigate around the place like you can like flutter jump around like the uh, moving platforms and such and that goes for a lot of areas in this game in general like when you're playing as Yoshi you definitely have a lot more control and that does alleviate some of the quote-unquote pains that some people have with the d-pad again I really just think it's a thing where some people just kind of got to get good like yeah sure it's a bit you don't have as much freedom as you would with an analog stick but it's really not that bad and this is coming from an n64 purist that only plays the game that way anytime that I choose to replay the oh my Oh my god look at how crisp that painting looks after you've played the original version of this game so many times like i said i've only played the ds remake like from start to finish maybe three times it's still just mind-blowing to me just how good all of this really does look one thing i will say it seems like they went for a bit more of a realistic approach with the ds as you can see like the colors were really saturated on the N64 version, but here they're a bit more muted. There's also a bit more popping. Like if I run down here to the bridge and then we look up there next to the red sign, there's nothing up there. But then as soon as we like go to run up the stairs, you can start to see a bunch of things like popping in in the background, like the red block there and then the sign. It's not a huge deal and it doesn't detract from the game in any way. I mean, this was running on a DS. Like I'm not complaining. These are just simple observations that I'm making about the game. <laughs> the fact that this was even possible on a DS back in the day, I'll never forget. The first time that I got this game and I I played it it was mind blowing some of my most played games on my ds were super mario 64 ds and new super mario bros and both of those games equally blew my mind in different ways up until i played new super mario bros ds the only other mario games i had really played a ton were like super mario world and mario bros 3 i played a good bit and then like the original mario bros i had played a couple of times but for the most part i spent a lot of time more than any other mario game on super mario world so going from a game like that on the snes to like all the 3d models and the shiny graphics on the new super mario bros 
Nintendo's DS. It was just, it was insane at the time. Then obviously I also love Super Mario 64 on the N64 and then being able to play this on my DS on the go and having it be not just a remake, but a reimagining of the game where I can finally play as Luigi after all those years of that back fountain teasing me. People still debate to this day what that sign actually said, but in my heart, I know it said L is real 2401. Then we got the final bomb. You just throw it at the Bob Bomb King and that's that. He'll bounce around for a little bit. And yeah, this fight, <laughs> I totally got squished right there. But this fight plays out a bit differently from the original because, oh wait, no, never mind. I have to hit him one more time. But if you play the original, obviously you run around him, you grab him, you pick him up, you throw him around a couple of times, you get your power star. But in this, it's like they completely revamped it. You eat the bombs, you throw it at him. It's just, it's crazy how hard they went on this DS remake. Like they didn't have to go this hard on a handheld remake, yet they did because that's just what Nintendo does. They do the most random things like this sometimes. Like they'll go so hard on a handheld remake. But then when it comes time to port a game like Super Mario Maker to the 3DS, they like put in no effort and actually strip out important elements of the game and just make it like the inferior version. Don't get me wrong, Super Mario Maker on the 3DS, I mean, it's still a good game. But there's no online features. Like, if you're gonna make a Mario Maker game, and if you're gonna release it on a console like the 3DS that actually has online elements, why would you strip all the online elements out of a game that relies so heavily? I just, I, I don't understand. Womp's Fortress is easily one of my favorite areas in the game. It's just, there's something about going for the power stars here. I just love all the different objectives here. And like, I just, I don't know. I love this area. Oh my gosh. I literally just got chills. Okay. So I just replayed Super Mario 64 like a couple of days ago. So, you know, all this is fresh in my mind, but Oh, I know we're upscaling this technically, but like, look at the graphics, like the design of the rocks and it's just, oh, it's so good. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Why isn't there eyes on these rocks anymore? I never noticed that. In the original, there's eyes on these rocks, but no, now in this, I, 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 like I said, I've only beaten this game like three times before. I never noticed that. It's those small details where I'm like, oh man. And obviously these guys used to be like blue and they used to be a bit more, I don't know, not so spooky looking, but now, yeah, now they got spikes. They're all scary. One thing I must say is that I'm glad that, oh wait, ow. One thing I must say about this version of the game is that whenever you're just like default walking speed, right? I mean, it's not even actually default walking speed. like. This is a bit faster than it should be because when you try to walk past these piranha plants up here, you wake them up at this default speed when you're not even running. You have to use the touchscreen if you want to walk and yet it's very particular, it's very sensitive. I know it's such a small thing and for like speedrunners, it doesn't even matter because obviously you just run up here, you jump past the piranha plant, it's not even a problem. But for a first time player, it's such a pain having to like come up and for me, for example, like I have to use a mouse so I have to walk like very slowly tiptoe around this prana plant like you know the feature is still here it works it's just you have to use the touch screen if you want to do this because otherwise you walk way too fast with the normal d-pad controls i know i was just saying a little bit ago like yeah people should stop being so critical of the controls it's not that bad and i do still stand by that it's really not as bad as people say but that being said yeah there was definitely some adjustments and improvements that could have been made before the game came out like it would have been so easy oh yeah this was another thing i forgot to mention uh at first the caps around the bubbles and such obviously in the original version of Game. The only caps you really had were the wing cap, the metal cap, and then the vanish cap. But in this one, when you pick up caps, it lets you transform to those characters. Like you got the Mario cap, the Luigi cap, the Wario cap. Unfortunately, there isn't a cap for Yoshi though. And this thing, it's weird because like you don't, you're like, yes, I'm playing as Mario and I'm wearing the Mario cap, but I'm not actually Mario. If you take a look at like the minimap thing, like it's just Yoshi with the Mario cap on. I know it's confusing, but yeah, right now I'm actually technically still Yoshi, even though I'm Mario. Now this is the same. This guy still does what he does in the original. You know, he slams down once you get close enough then you gotta run up behind do the whole stompy stomp on him i've always loved the boss fights oh no i got stuck on his foot and apparently i'm dead what was that man i got stuck on his foot and then i just i i lost the life because of it okay so yes i'll admit yeah you know if it wasn't for the controls in this game i would have been fine right there and i wouldn't have gotten stuck on his foot but i i despite that despite all the deaths i i stand by what i said it's really not that bad main reason i drive that point home is just because some people are like no the controls are so bad dude don't even play the ds version and like it's, it's not bad bad like it's not bad enough as to where you should completely avoid this version of the game it's just it's something to consider but it's not like it's ever bad enough to like truly detract from your enjoyment of the game like it's totally playable we're only two months away from new super mario bros wonder dude i am so excited for that game it's not even funny come on womp you ain't gonna get me this time run in front of him run away let him stand oh god <laughs> you know emulation is great and all but it's not always perfect sometimes you get those little frame stars like that no crushed again i'm just a stepping stone after all i won't gravel or grovel <laughs> here you win take this with you and there it is we got the power star for defeating the giant womp 
man. And that's where we're going to wrap things up. Now, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. What are your guys' thoughts on the DS version of this game? Do you guys love this version of the game? Do the controls kind of put you off? Do you think this is superior to the original? Do you think it's inferior? Whatever it is, whatever you're thinking, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. But anyway, as always, a massive shout-out. Thank you to all the patrons and channel members. Thank you to all of you in the low baller tier. And an even bigger shout-out. Thank you to all of you in the big baller tier. Mellow Last King, and Big Daddy Maddie. And the biggest shout-out. Thank you all to all of you in the G tier. Ron and Vengeance, and Little Cheese Girl. Thank you guys so much. You guys are literal legends. I love you. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.